So we talk about diverse portfolios. I think a lot of people would agree that a, a diverse portfolio is something that's valuable. It sounds like the 757 Angels network ecosystem is trying to enhance their portfolio and have different pieces at their table so that um, at the end, which I think is 757 Angels, they have been working with these groups for a long period of time. So is it just above 757 Angels is, is Accelerate, and then the studios is above that, is kind of how the, if it was a sales funnel, it would go through, or am I missing something on that? Um, so we're all separate, but under like the same umbrella as a whole. Um, so we all collaborate with each other, and often, you know, like the startup studios, I am one of the pre-screeners, as well as Ian, who's with the 757 Accelerate, and then it goes down to a selection, uh, um, a committee that is actually of, um, a lot of different people that are just a part of the ecosystem in the community. Um, and so I think that's going to be five to six people, but that are not actually internal um, for the selection committee. So I think we all collaborate with each other, but obviously are our own thing at the same time. Yeah. I mean, it just seems like the, uh, the co-working space in general, it seems like there is so much of it right now and so many vacancies. How is, uh, and, and adding value is something that's really, really important. Um, yeah, how, how is the, the application process now? I mean, what kind of companies are, are you getting the companies applying that you're looking for? Uh, it just it seems like anybody that has an open office right now is like advertising uh, their space to use. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure how the other ones work, um, but obviously I think the free rent um, where we're not taking any equity or anything like that is definitely a pro. Um, and so I think the value add would be the proximity to resources. You know, the angels are gonna be located in the office. So if you wanna talk to us about timing, positioning for your company in terms of being able to be ready for that investing from the group, um, we would love to talk to you. There is Tech Bridge, which is a naval side to it that's gonna be located in that office as well, as well as the 757 Accelerate. Um, and then you have the entirety of Assembly, which they're gathering a bunch of creatives um, and amazing companies in that office. So I think the density and being able to offer that mentorship and that help within the office gives us a, a unique value add. Um, and I think the other offices like Gather, um, I think they're amazing. So it's not to take anything away from them, um, but I think we do add that unique value add to the startup specifically. For sure. What? Uh, how much space is uh, do this, does startup studios have and assembly have uh, in terms of like total square footage or how many offices are available? Um, in in terms of ours specifically. Yeah, I just uh, and I don't mean to put you on the spot. If no, you don't know. Right. Um, One point seven thousand square yeah, feet. Exactly. Um, so it's a really it's a giant area where we're going to be co working. Um, so there's long desks, and obviously because of pandemic concerns, we had to take a few positions away to separate. You know, um, mm -hmm. for health concerns. But I think there's going to be fifteen spots open. Um, as well as there's going to be two specific offices, one for Tech Bridge, which is the Navy side, and then one that's shared between the Accelerator and Angels. So my observation of co-working in this area is very different than co-working in other areas, where I think in other areas, the long, crazy tables, people coding away works. However, here, co-working is really just uh, office with a door. Uh, and I think that the, the the actual co-working stuff that you just talked about seems to, and maybe it's changed you know, in, in, well, not since COVID because no one's been there, but it seems like that model doesn't work here. It seems like people don't sit at tables. They don't work like that. It's very distraction heavy. And the thing that does work is going in and, and going into an office and actually working in that way. So what are you guys going with that as my research and, and me seeing that firsthand and a guy who's basically ran a co-working space too and hatch, like, I don't think that model works. So what are you guys going to be doing differently that actually gets that model to work? Right, so obviously we have uh, full access to the building amenities, which has a rooftop bar and lounge space. They can work on their own if they so choose. Um, however, being in that office, I think that density is gonna be key. And I think just obviously I was on the West Coast with Uber, um, but those long desks actually, you know, 
helped us a ton in terms of collaborating and working together. Um, and so I think that's our goal is in terms of getting these companies to kind of collaborate and vibe off each other and and to just, you know, encourage each other and be there because being a founder is really difficult. Um, so I think being able to do it together kind of as a team um, is going to be helpful. Now, I think if that becomes an issue and if we need to pivot in the way we structure or model our office, we will. Um, but I'm really excited to see if this works because I think we have a unique value offering and I'm excited to be in the office and be right there in the middle of that co-working space myself. So yeah. how does oh, sorry, sorry Tim? How does someone deal with the distractions that are that long table though? The knocking on the door effect of every two seconds of hey, here you are doing this thing because I, I feel like that's that's why people like the to go behind the doors uh, at all the co working spaces in the area. Um, you don't see a lot of work being done from there, and so you're saying that collaboration is what's going to be valuable. But what I've seen is that collaboration is what pe what brings people behind that door because they actually have to get work done because they have milestones and and they need to make money and, and food under the table and things like that so so it'll be very interesting to see how how that works with you guys because i feel like that that is what's brought people into wanting that closed door office yeah um i definitely saw myself at the uber office you know although we had those long desks often you know, going up to one of the couch rooms um, or one of the speakeasy rooms to kind of, you know, kind of get a quieter space to do a little bit of work. But we do offer, you know, the building does have private conference rooms. It does have private rooms um, that you'll have access to as well. Um, however, we think that the community aspect of it, being able to, you know, work together and vibe off each other and I think that is going to be a huge value add currently. Um, obviously, talk to me in you know six to nine months, and we'll we'll kind of see where I'm at, you know, positioned then. But I'm I'm really bullish on the idea. I'm really excited about trying it and seeing how it works. Um, but again, talk to me, talk to me in nine months, and we'll see.